How do you write a bestseller? That was Land Rover's problem when it came to improving its runaway success story, the Range Rover Evoque, a car that now accounts for a third of the brand's total sales. It's a fashionable yet capable proposition that has fundamentally changed the premium compact SUV market, and rivals now have to contend with an evolved version that features a more efficient range of diesel engines, extra technology, and even, uniquely in this sector, the option of a convertible body style. As a result, if you want an SUV of this kind, this is still the one to beat. It's getting on for half a century since all-wheel driving was revolutionised by the Range Rover, a car now a class apart in the luxury 4x4 sector. But what would that model look like reinvented in smaller form for very different millennial times, an age in which fashion and frugality are as important as toughness and traction? Something like this, we think. The Range Rover Evoque, here rejuvenated in much improved form. This car's original launch back in 2011 represented a watershed moment for the Land Rover brand. Every bit as important as the arrival of the original Range Rover in 1970, the Discovery in 1989 and the Freelander in 1997. To survive the mark, knew it had to reach the younger buyers, fueling the spectacular rising sales of crossovers and small SUVs. That meant the need for a fresh, very different, compact model that would reflect a radical change in design. Hence the futuristic LRX concept car from which the Evoque was developed before being launched to a rapturous reception. By 2015, over 450,000 examples of this model were pounding global roads, but the competition was hotting up. By now, all the prestige brands had piled into this profitable segment, and cars like the Lexus NX and the second-generation BMW X1 were being targeted directly at Evoque buyers. This baby Range Rover didn't have to be as spacious as contenders like these, given its positioning in Land Rover showrooms alongside the company's practical seven-seat Discovery Sport model. What it did need, though, was a more class-competitive diesel engine. And that's been duly delivered with the more efficient Ingenium 2-litre TD4 unit now plumbed in beneath the bonnet. And the company's gone further. Having shaken up the style expectations of buyers in this sector with the original version of this car, this Evoque can now offer something else they won't have expected. The world's first SUV convertible body style. The first such model the brand has ever made. Here, though, we're going to focus on the conventional version that most will want, and as well as testing that Ingenium engine, bring you up to date with the car's extra technology, its smarter looks and its classier feel. As before, it sets out to meet a daunting set of challenges, aiming to provide luxurious room for four in a shape shorter than a Ford Focus, along with handling as satisfying as a sports coupe, and economy that might allow green-minded versions to rival the returns of a city car, all to be delivered with class-leading off-road expertise in a car right for its times. Quite a build-up. Quite a car. Let's find out. You normally know pretty much what you're going to get at the wheel of a Land Rover product. Well, not here you don't. The rakish roof line suggests you'll be driving a sporting coupe-like car, in contrast to the way that the high waistline and huge wheels promise the commanding driving position of a tough 4x4. In the event you find behind the wheel that it's kind of combination between the two, with the seat set high but the driving position angled and purposeful. But can that same mix of SUV and sports car be achieved out on the road? Time to find out. Well, first impressions are good. This Evoque may be based on underpinnings borrowed from the old Freelander model, but it feels very different from that car to drive. 
How different? Well, Land Rover's engineers wanted hot hatch and coupe drivers to be able to jump behind the wheel and feel right at home. And they will, though uh, to what extent uh, will depend on several factors. It might, after all, be a little hard to feel too sporty in a 1.6-tonne car powered by a 2-litre diesel with just 150 brake horsepower. Although, to be fair, such an entry-level two-wheel drive Evoque does manage 62 miles an hour from rest in 10.6 seconds on the way to 113 miles an hour. Now, that might be as fast as you need to go, but if it isn't, then four-wheel drive models also offer this power plant in a 180 PS state of tune. And in this guise, the performance figures improve to 9.5 seconds and 124 miles an hour for the manual model. More importantly, from the point of view of acceleration and towing, torque rises by 15% to 430 newton meters with the Pokia engine. The power plant in question is a very different one in this improved model. The old 2.2 litre Ford derived diesel dispensed with in favour of the brand's own Ingenium series of lighter 2 litre TD4 units that offer much greater efficiency and a considerable step forward in refinement. If you're familiar with the older Evoque, then you really will find this one much quieter. At cruising speeds, it ticks over at less than 2,000 RPM and fades discreetly into the background. Handling is a touch better than before too, thanks to this TD4 engine's lighter weight and the way that the suspension has been tweaked to accommodate it. As before, that setup can incorporate the optional adaptive dynamics with MagnaRide package. Here, magnetic MagnaRide dampers monitor vehicle movements a thousand times a second, uh, reacting to driver or road inputs instantaneously to give greater control and minimise body roll, providing a balanced, flat ride. It's an option that you'll want if you plan to drive this car enthusiastically. You'll certainly need this if you opt for the single petrol-powered Evoque model on offer, the 240 brake horsepower SI4 variant. Now this does continue with the old Ford technology, specifically the rousing 2-litre EcoBoost turbo unit from the Blue Oval brand's Focus ST hot hatch, an engine that will fire you from rest to 60 in just 7.1 seconds on route to 135 miles an hour. And that's if you're quick with the standard steering wheel gear shift paddles, this petrol model being fitted only with automatic transmission. That auto box is optional if you do go for a five-door TD4 diesel model like this one, but you have to have it if you choose the TD4 engine with the coupe body style. Either way, this advanced ZF transmission is quite a piece of work, offering no fewer than nine speeds, including a super low one for starting off on slippery surfaces, and a long-legged set of top ratios for extra efficiency at a cruise. The shift system can get a little lost sometimes searching for ratios in town, but otherwise this smooth and efficient auto is well worth having, not least because it raises towing capability on the TD4 model from 1.8 to 2 tonnes. Talking of capability, since this is a Land Rover product, we'll need to cover its prowess in the rough stuff. Uh, fears that this Evoque might prioritise style over substance vanish the first time you hit the dirt. This little Range Rover is one of the very few cars in this segment offered with a proper permanent four-wheel drive, with the TD4 models that most customers choose supplied complete with what the brand calls its standard drive line. With this setup, you could, if you were so minded, really exercise this little Range Rover's mud-plugging prowess. There are limitations, of course. The Evoque lacks the ground clearance and the air suspension that you find on the brand's larger models, but we think you'd have to be doing something really quite extreme to find them. Partly, that's due to the fitment of Land Rover's much-admired terrain response system. All that's required with this is to use these buttons in front of the gear stick, selecting a mode to suit the ground that you're on. There are general driving, grass, gravel, snow, mud and ruts, and sand options. And once you've chosen one of these, then it's just a case of leaving the car's electronics to work out best how to dole out power and maximise traction, sniffing out grip where really none seems to exist, and turning the Evoque into an impressively capable all-road driving machine with progress that you can monitor in real time via a neat 4x4i display on the central dash infotainment screen. 
If we do have a slight disappointment with terrain response, it's only that in this form it doesn't provide you with the set and forget auto mode that's offered on larger Land Rover models and which effectively makes all the decisions for you. Still, you can't argue with levels of off-piece capability that are every bit as good as those of the brand's supposedly more practical Discovery Sport model. So this Evoque can take four foot high water, can scale extremely steep 45 degree gradients, can tilt to an impressive 35 degrees and will deliver a set of basic off-road stats that directed competitors can't get near. Land Rover quotes uh, class leading angles of approach 25 degrees, departure 33 degrees and breakover 22 degrees which consequently puts this car far ahead of conventional compact SUV rivals like BMW's X1 and Audi's Q3 in terms of off-road prowess. Not that you'll ever see this car off-road of course. Spattering all that glamorous paintwork with mud looks rather incongruous which is why we couldn't wait to do that. And to help you make the most of this capability, there's hill start assist to help uh, get you up steep slopes and hill descent control and gradient release control to ease you down them. If you're fording up to 500 millimetres of water, an optional wade sensing feature uh, updates you on the depth you're in. And best of all is a fresh feature that's available for four-wheel drive automatic versions of this revised model, that of all-terrain progress control. Essentially a low-speed cruise control system for slow and steady progress over rough terrain. But of course not everyone wants that kind of mud-plugging ability. In fact, rather disappointingly for Land Rover, very few Evoque customers do, so those of them who don't want permanent four-wheel drive get two other options. Either they can go for the ED4 150 PS two-wheel drive variants uh, that sit at the bottom of the range, or so they can have the chance to occasionally use extra 4x4 traction, they can opt for what Land Rover calls its active driveline setup. That's available at extra cost for TD4 buyers, but is standard on the performance-minded SI4 petrol version. With Active Driveline, you basically get the same kind of four-wheel drive system that all the other compact SUVs and crossovers in this segment provide, namely one that leaves you in two-wheel drive most of the time, but defaults to uh, four driven wheels if a lack of traction demands it. Active driveline models also get a torque vectoring system that, when powering through tight corners, transfers power to the wheel that can most effectively use it, improving traction. Whatever drive system you end up going for, the reality is that you're going to be using your Evoque on a paved service almost all the time. An environment in which, as I suggested earlier, this car feels equally at home. A twisty sec of tarmac terrain taken at speed quickly emphasises just how well this little Range Rover can handle for an SUV of this kind. This time around there are more effective brakes with larger discs and accurate corner turning allows you to make the most of the consistently weighted steering and solid body control. And if you have enhanced that capability with the optional adaptive dynamics package that I mentioned earlier, then you'll also get the benefit of a terrain system featuring an extra dynamic mode that stiffens the suspension and further reduces body roll. Don't get us wrong, this is no hot hatch. The surprise though for new Evoque converts will be just how close this Land Rover gets to that standard. In fact, the differences between this car and other sporty fashionable lifestyle models that you could choose for similar money tend to be limited to things you'll rarely notice in ordinary motoring. In contrast, the benefits of this Range Rover over other such trendy choices, say a Pokia Mini, an Audi TT or a racier Volkswagen Scirocco for instance, in extra style and space will be appreciated every day. And of course, cars like these that are merely sporting will have no chance of getting off the beaten track. You can, in short, easily see why the Evoque has been such a sales success. Not many cars make it from concept motor show prototype to production reality without being significantly watered down, but this was one of them. We first saw what was then called the LRX in 2008, and the Evoque model it then became is as arresting to look at now as it was back then. And whether you opt for this five-door body style or the coupe or convertible three-door versions, you know from a glance that it's a Land Rover, though to begin with it's 
really quite hard to pin down exactly why. Here's the kind of fantasy distortion you might see in a kid's comic. All big wheels and bloated wheel arches and impossibly shallow side window work. Boxiness is banished, as is a kind of bluff front end that gives a conventional range over the aerodynamic efficiency of your average garden shed. As for the changes made to this improved Evoke, well, to be honest, you'd have to be a previous owner to spot them. The biggest difference with this model line at this time around is the addition of a convertible body style that bases itself on the coupe version but adds a Z-fold electric fabric roof that can lower in 18 seconds and rise again in just 21 seconds. Most Evoke buyers, though, are going to want one of the hard top variants probably a five-door version like the one we have here, a derivative that now gets the eye-catching vents in the clamshell bonnet that were previously restricted to the coupe model. As for the other little detail visual tweaks made across the Evoque range, well, let's walk through them. There's a revised front bumper that aims to offer a slightly more muscular appearance and features these much larger air intakes that on plush models like this one are topped by slimline LED fog lamps. Avoid entry level trim and you get xenon headlamps with LED signature lighting plus there's now the option of full LED headlamps if you want them. Either way, the lights frame a revised front grille that comes with uh, two bold horizontal bars in lower spec models or with this geometric hexagonal design in top variants. At the rear, there are fewer changes, though a smarter tailgate spoiler with integrated high-level LED stoplight offers a slightly sportier feel. Otherwise, the wedgy look remains much as before, embellished by narrow, jewel-like full LED tail lamps. And lower down, this potent rear diffuser skid plate panel offers the finishing touch. In many ways, though, it's the profile that is the most striking part of this design. The coupe version is, of course, a little more rakish than this five-door model, but both variants share the same width, length and wheelbase. Either way, big wheels like these huge optional 20-inch rims really set the shape off. But even entry-level variants are eye-catching thanks to this sharply rising glasshouse angle that tapers away towards the rear. It's emphasised by black floating pillars and the sharp swage line that's just below the door handles along with the less prominent one just above the sills. Under the skin, many of the mechanicals are shared with Land Rover's Discovery Sport model, a car that's over 200 kilograms heavier, partly because it's slightly longer. At 4.35 metres, this Evoque is intentionally compact, only slightly longer than the Volkswagen Golf, but it just looks right, with a shape that works anywhere, on paper, in the showroom, on the King's Road, wherever. Where it can't possibly work, you think, before opening the door, is on the inside. There's such a narrow glass house, you'd expect that claustrophobia must surely reign across the cabin. And anyway, how will you reverse this thing, peering back through that letterbox-sized rear window? And what will roundabouts be like with these huge mirrors obstructing front three-quarter vision? All very good questions, for which, as it turns out, Jerry McGovern and his design team have styled some surprisingly effective answers. Sitting here at the wheel, it isn't as if your fears are groundless. You do, after all, really need the standard reverse parking sensors. The high flanks can make this car tricky to place in a tight spot. And the large mirrors do slightly impede your vision at junctions. But none of it's really enough to affect day-to-day -day usability. Uh, you work around it because you want to. Because going back to boxiness after only one of these would be almost unthinkable. Don't get us wrong, uh, this is a very comfortable car to sit in. If it is indeed an SUV, then it's one of the most car-like yet devised in terms of driving position. No one will struggle to sort that out to their satisfaction, and all will be impressed by the tactile quality of the fixtures and fittings that surround them, which is just as well at the high prices being asked. Glistening switches and dials from pricier Range Rover models are surveyed from beautifully upholstered sports seats. These ones here trimmed in perforated Oxford ebony leather. 
Top models like this one use no less than 10 square metres of grained Taurus leather and premium Oxford highs to trim their cabins. The stitched finish of the dashboard here looking especially classy. It's just one of a whole range of lovely design touches. We like the Volvo-style empty space behind the rising centre console and the way that the rotary gear selector on automatic models glides up into your palm from start-up. Most importantly, perhaps, it all appears to have been beautifully screwed together in the uh, Merseyside factory where this car rolls down production lines alongside its Discovery Sport stablemate. As for changes made inside this revised Evoque, well, basically it's a lot of little things that add up to quite a lot. Revised interior uh, door casings feature reprofiled armrests, and the instrument binnacle that you view through the three-spoke leather-trimmed multifunction steering wheel has been redesigned with clearer dials. These are separated by a much smarter TFT central colour display, showing things like uh, fuel range, uh, gear position and ambient temperature. Nice, freshly added optional touches include things like massaging climate-controlled seats and configurable mood lighting that can bathe the cabin in your choice of 10 different colours. Uh, plus, there's an optional head-up display. As for practicalities, well, there's not a huge amount of cabin storage space. The door pockets and the glove box are a little small, and there's nowhere to put your sunglasses. You do get a reasonably sized bin behind these cup holders between the seats, though, uh, complete with various connectivity ports. And we like the fact that the switch gear is designed to be operated with gloved hands. The key cabin feature, though, lies here in the centre of the dash. At last, Land Rover has delivered a state-of-the-art infotainment screen to its volume buyers. The 8-inch in-control touch display is clear, easy to navigate around and very informative. Plus, the brand has also developed a larger 10.2-inch in-control touch pro screen that's standard for convertible Evoque buyers. Unfortunately, though, in neither case can you access the infotainment functionality uh, via the kind of rotary controller that makes comparable Audi and BMW systems so easy to get to grips with. Instead, you have to jab away using the touch screen if, well, like me, you can't get to grips with voice control. Still, once you do master the setup, it is undeniably very impressive, not only dealing with the expected audio, climate, telephone and navigation functions, but also allowing access to Land Rover's suite of in-control connected car technologies. Most will want the in-control apps feature that allows you to select from a whole series of downloadable compatible apps. Time to take a seat in the rear. Now here the shallow side windows create a bit of a hemmed in feel but overall the space on offer is surprising when you consider the, the rakish roof line and the fact that this car is short on the Ford Focus. If you're going to be regularly using this part of your Evoque then you'll have opted for the five door body shape that we're trying here. Not only because of its extra rear doors but also because it offers 35 millimeters more roof height than the coupe version. Mind you, even that three-door model is reasonably spacious when compared to the kind of GT or sports coupe that many customers will be graduating from. In this five-door variant, a couple of backseat adults will be very comfortable on all but the longest journeys, despite the fact that you don't get the uh, reclining backrests that are provided on a Discovery Sport. Uh, this central armrest folds to reveal a couple of cup holders, and when you're not using it, there's just about enough space for a third adult on shorter trips, although they won't be especially comfortable. We would recommend this optional full-length panoramic glass roof, even though it does inhibit the already slightly restricted headroom. Evoke cabin trim tends to make it all feel rather dark in here, but with this feature in place, the interior can be flooded with light. As for luggage room, well, let's see. It's now possible to specify one of those gesture-driven electrically powered tailgates that you can raise with a wave of your foot beneath the bumper if you're approaching the car laden down with bags. We still think it's a pity though that the futuristic styling doesn't permit the fitment of that signature Range Rover feature, the two-piece tailgate. 
Something else that you might think would be restricted by the rakish looks, the high floor, the low roof and the stubby rear overhangs is lavish amounts of boot space. After all, you'd think that Land Rover could afford a few compromises here, given that it has a similarly sized Discovery Sport model to suit more practically orientated buyers. With the composite plastic rear hatch raised, the 575 litre space revealed in this five door version is 114 litres less than you get in a boxy Discovery Sport. But a glance at rival model stats uh, reveals that this still means you get a slightly more spacious boot than you would in obvious rivals, even those in the BMW X3 and Audi Q5 class. Enough, Land Rover proudly boasts, to take a set of golf clubs without having to take the long clubs out of the bag first. Go for the Evoque Coupe and that figure falls to 550 litres, while with the convertible uh, model you predictably get a lot less, just 251 litres. Mind you, that's not bad for a drop top and there is the option of a ski hatch to extend the capacity. In this five-door variant, you certainly get a very usable space with a 12-volt socket for convenience and more room under the floor thanks to Land Rover's disappointing decision not to equip this car with any kind of spare wheel as standard, just one of those irritating tyre repair kits. The futuristic styling has more of an effect when it comes to cargo capacity with the rear bench folded. Um, at 1,445 litres in this five-door model, uh, that's a little less than you get on competitor models, and nor do you get the option of a fold-forward front passenger seat for long items like kayaks. It's just as well, then, that you can specify a roof rack capable of holding up to 75 kilograms for lengthy items like these. In the coupe version, the total seats-folded cargo figure is 1,350 litres. Though in theory it's possible to buy yourself an Evoque for not much more than around £30,000, in practice hardly anyone ever will. Purchase of a car like this one isn't, after all, something you usually commit to with an eye on the bottom line. No, this is the kind of model you buy to reward yourself and as such you'll probably want this Range Rover to be bespoke which of course will entail a possibly expensive foray into the options list once you've made your choice from trim levels which could see you paying up to around £50,000. Work around a £35,000 to £40,000 budget and you'll probably get most of what you'll ideally want. There are two main body styles, a three-door coupe and this, the five-door version that most customers choose. Like-for-like -like versions of both these hatch models are identically priced. The coupe also forms the basis for a stylish convertible model, Land Rover's first, although because the open top variant comes only in top spec trim, it commands premium pricing, either just above or just below £50,000. Onto the range detail. Now with the hard top body style, the lineup starts with the most efficient two-wheel drive ED4E capability models, which get a 150 PS version of the Ingenium 2-litre diesel engine freshly developed for this revised Evoque. Most buyers, though, will probably want to find the £2,600 model-for-model premium that gets you the TD4 version of this car. The extra cash delivering not only the permanent four-wheel drive system you'd expect a Land Rover to have, but also a lustier 180 PS version of that Ingenium diesel. A key option if you've chosen a TD4 five-door model like this one is Land Rover's smooth-shifting nine-speed ZF automatic transmission. It's an extra £1,800 with this body style and quite a desirable fitment, which is just as well because you have to have it with a TD4 coupe and convertible model. Whatever Evoque TD4 bottle style you prefer, you'll be offered an alternative option to the permanent four-wheel drive system that comes as standard with the car. An extra £650 will get your car fitted with the more efficient active driveline four-wheel drive setup that's able to intelligently switch between two and four-wheel drive for greater efficiency on tarmac. Active driveline comes as standard if you go for the SI4 petrol engine. Onto the value proposition that Evoque range pricing represents. In this regard, the car is pitched very comparably against Land Rover's more practical but less stylish Discovery Sport model, an SUV that's mechanically almost identical to an Evoque beneath the skin. 
Otherwise, this car's market placement is much as before. Lower order variants appeal to buyers who tend to be considering prestige badge models in the family crossover or small SUV segments. Cars like uh, BMW's X1, Audi's Q3, Mercedes GLA and the Lexus NX. Like base versions of this Range Rover, all these cars sit in the £30,000 to £35,000 bracket. Evoke buyers considering a more expensive variant, though, are more likely to be looking at a slightly larger premium badge compact SUV. Cars like Audi's Q5, BMW's X3 and Mercedes GLC, maybe also Volvo's XC60. Mainstream versions of these contenders tend to sit in the £35,000 to £40,000 bracket. Now, the Evoque may be slightly less practical than rivals like these, but it's better on and off-road and undeniably more stylish. As ever, it comes down to what you want. Well, if, having considered all of this, an Evoque comes top of your wish list, then you're going to want to know just how generous Land Rover has been with the standard spec. Now, trim variants vary with body style, but let's start by assuming that, like most buyers, you want the five-door version that we're trying here. Now, that'll probably see you choosing between the two key trim levels, SE and HSE Dynamic, that cover most of the range. These supplemented by optional SE Tech and HSE Dynamic Looks upgrade options that throw in additional kit for a modest extra outlay. Or you can just push the boat out and go for the top autobiography derivative that has, well, almost everything on it. As for the other body styles, well, the three-door coupe lineup doesn't come in base SE trim, but is otherwise the same as that of the five-door. And the convertible range was launched only in the two plush HSE dynamic guises. On to the equipment specifics. Now, most of the key features you'll need are included on all variants, although rather disappointingly on a car this capable, you do have to pay extra for a space saver spare wheel. Still, there are few other emissions, so even on the least expensive SE model, you get a specification truly befitting a car wearing the luxury Range Rover badge. And that means 18-inch alloy wheels, auto headlamps and wipers, power folding mirrors, all-round parking sensors and a volumetric alarm. Inside, front seat passengers get eight-way electrically adjustable leather seats, automatic climate control and an auto-dimming rearview mirror. TD4 buyers also get the clever terrain response system that you can set to suit various kinds of off-road surface. And all models feature the brand's in-control touch infotainment system, accessed via an 8-inch high-resolution colour screen and including an 8-speaker DAB sound setup, USB, aux in and iPod sockets and Bluetooth phone connectivity. The package includes what Land Rover calls In Control Protect, a system that will automatically call the emergency services with your exact location if the airbags activate in an accident. Plus, it gives you a downloadable remote essentials app that can show the location of your vehicle, update you on its fuel and fluid levels, tell you if the windows have been left open and allow you to download journey information. Pretty complete tally then. If you want more, then the SE Tech spec that marks the entry-level point for coupe customers adds xenon headlamps with LED signature lighting, front fog lamps and a heated windscreen. Plus, at this level, you'll get a navigation option on the in-control touch screen. To really make the most of that infotainment package, though, you'll need to buy into the Evoque lineup from the mid-range HSE dynamic level upwards. And that will get you the more sophisticated in-control touch plus system. This will give you the CD player that, rather annoyingly, is missing from the standard version of this setup. Uh, also, more importantly, you get the package with an 11-speaker, 380-watt Meridian sound system, incorporating a subwoofer and a DVD, hard disk drive audio server, as well as voice control and more sophisticated 3D navigation with dynamic route guidance. HSE Dynamic buyers also get a smart body kit, larger 20-inch wheels, a rear camera, stainless steel pedals and 12-way front seat adjustability. Here we've gone for a plush HSE Dynamic Lux model that includes a further package of real niceties. Things like a surround view camera system, a panoramic glass roof, keyless entry, a park assist system that will steer you into spaces and a gesture tailgate that you can open by waving your foot beneath the bumper. 
And at this level, the in-control touch plus system gets 17 speakers and 825 watts of power, along with dual view functionality for the display screen so that the driver and the front passenger can watch different things, possibly via the included digital TV tuner. If you want to go even further, only autobiography trim remains with its premium Oxford leather interior, premium look and 14-way adjustable front seats. This flagship model gives you the in-control secure vehicle tracking system along with the in-control connect pack of extra features for the infotainment touchscreen that are optional elsewhere in the range. Whatever Evoque you choose, you're very likely to want these, so I'll give you some detail. That Connect Pack gives you three main features, in-control apps, in-control Wi-Fi and in-control remote premium. Now, the app setup was developed with the experts at Bosch Softech and works with both Apple and Android phones. You simply connect your handset into the car's USB port and choose from a whole range of downloadable apps, including popular ones like Stitcher, uh, Glimpse. Hotel Seeker, City Seeker and Air Motion News. The in-control Wi-Fi system, meanwhile, enables you to create in your Evoque a mobile Wi-Fi hotspot, allowing up to eight electronic devices to be simultaneously connected. As for the in-control remote premium feature, well, that adds extra ways to monitor the functionality of your car remotely from your smartphone, uh, allowing you to lock or unlock the vehicle from anywhere in the world, pre-cool or preheat the cabin to a required temperature before the start of any journey, and even assist you if you need help in finding your Evoque in a crowded car park. Now, if you've opted for the convertible model, then all of this will be accessible as standard from a larger 10.2-inch in-control touch pro screen that includes features like an in-control arrival mode, displaying 360-degree uh, street-level imagery of your destination. Enough, though, with the infotainment stuff. Time to focus on the other key things you'll need to bear in mind when specifying your Evoque. Now, if you prioritise tarmac performance, then the optional Adaptive Dynamics Pack will give you Magnaride adaptive dampers that'll set the car up through the turns to suit the way that you want to drive. Plus, you get an extra dynamic setting for the terrain response system that tunes the suspension for tighter body control. If, on the other hand, you're one of those rare Evoque buyers who emphasise off-road ability, then you'll like the idea of the optional all-terrain progress control system that you can set at low speeds to ease you over awkward terrain. Or maybe the wage sensing feature that'll inform you of your water depth on the central dash infotainment screen. The optional surround camera setup would also be useful here, um, but it'll probably be of most use to towers who also obviously want a tow bar and could be tempted into paying extra for a rear view camera package that also includes hitching guidance. On to aesthetics. Now with a car this fashion led, you'll want the look to be right. Whatever colour you select, there's the option of contrasting your choice with one of the three different roof shades. Chorus Grey, Fuji White or, as in this case, Santorini Black. And here it's set off with privacy glass too. Avoid entry-level models and you can also specify an optional black pack which gives you a darkened front and rear lights, black model lettering and huge 20-inch wheels. On the subject of wheels, a wide range of stylish 17, 18 and 19 inch rims are available and you can add side steps, bodywork decals and carbon fibre finishes for the mirror covers, the side vents and the bonnet louvers. Oh, and the piercing full LED adaptive headlamps that are optionally offered on most models look great at night too. Inside you can have illuminated personalised tread plates, aluminium gear shift paddles and there is a choice of different aluminium or wood cabin finishes. What else? Well, bear in mind that most of these standard fit features on the expensive trim levels are also available as options lower down the range, many of them bundled up into packs that make more sense than individually ordered items. As for things that we haven't so far mentioned, well, if budget permits, there's there's plenty else to tempt you. Configurable mood lighting can bathe the cabin in your choice of 10 different colours. A head-up display will keep your eyes on the road. Uh, the seats can be both heated and cooled and can even feature a massaging function to soothe you as you drive. 
Finally, to keep the kids quiet, you might also fancy adding the rear seat entertainment system, which mounts two 8-inch screens into the back of the front headrests and includes DVD playback, remote control and a pair of wireless digital headphones with the latest white fire technology. Uh, if you can't stretch to that, then simply specifying the iPad holders that your dealer can provide could achieve very much the same result. As for practical stuff, well, you can have roof rails with a black finish that can take up to 75 kilograms and can be configured to take skis, snowboards, a kayaks or a roof box. Bikes too, although you're more likely to want to carry them on the optional rear-mounted bike carrier. For the boot, you might want that powered tailgate with or without the gesture foot-waving feature. And we want the load space stowage rails, which, along with the luggage retention kit or the optional load space organiser, would allow you to neatly compartmentalise the cargo area. This part of the car can also be embellished with a practical rubber mat, a mesh barrier for pet confinement and an extendable seating panel for things like uh, tailgate picnics. For these, you might also want the optional leather-trimmed centre armrest cooler and warmer box that slots onto the back seats. On to safety provision. Now, Land Rover says it's gone the extra mile here. Introduced into this revised Evoque is an autonomous emergency braking system, which uses a digital stereo camera mounted next to the rearview mirror to detect objects that could pose a collision threat, delivering visual and audible warnings and automatically applying the brakes if a collision is imminent. Uh, also standard is a lane departure warning system that warns dozy drivers who are veering out of their lanes on the highway. Other more expected features that justify this model's five-star Euro NCAP safety test showing include Isofix child seat fastenings, twin front side and curtain airbags, plus a knee bag for the driver, along with tyre pressure monitoring and a pedestrian-friendly design for the bonnet and for the bumper. As usual, electronic aids to ensure that an accident can be avoided in the first place include things like ABS brakes that feature emergency brake assist to aid in panic stops that will be advertised to following motorists by automated hazard warning lights. As you expect from a car of this kind, there's also TCS traction control and DSC stability control, along with hill start assist to stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions, uh, trailer stability assist to stop trailer sway, and on four-wheel drive models, hill descent control and gradient release control to ease you down those slippery slopes. Across the range, there's also roll stability control, while on the convertible model, there's a rollover protection device featuring deployable rollover bars hidden in the rear bodywork that spring up in just 90 milliseconds if it looks like the vehicle's going to tip. If you want to go further, then a series of other high-tech electronic safety options are optional across the range and standard on top models. The blind spot monitor with closed-in vehicle sensing and reverse traffic detection package does pretty much what it suggests. So you'll be prompted if, on the move, you're dangerously pulling out to overtake, plus you'll be alerted if you're too close to the car in front, and you'll be warned if you're backing out of a space into the path of an oncoming car. There's lots of other optional electronic safety technology too. Automatic high beam assist uh, will uh, dip your lights for you at night. Traffic sign recognition will picture road signs as you drive and display them on the dash. Attention assist estimation will monitor your driving reactions for drowsiness. And lane keep assist will gently help you steer back into your lane if you drift out of it. We'd also want to look at the adaptive cruise control with Q assist and intelligent emergency braking package. Here, a radar mounted in the front grille maintains a steady distance to the car in front at cruising speeds and can break your evoke, then automatically start it off again if you come across the traffic tailback, with the same technology providing further emergency braking cover if a frontal collision becomes unavoidable. Such is the futuristic design of this car that it's almost a surprise to find a range of fairly conventional turbocharged four-cylinder engines beneath the bonnet. No hybrid or electric gadgetry. 
Now, they stowed the engines in question and now Land Rover's own this car, having originally launched back in 2011 with aging Ford technology beneath the bonnet. These days, all diesel evokes are fitted with engines from the company's Ingenium series of 2-litre units, and the result is an 18% efficiency improvement across the range, equating to better than kind tax savings of around 3%. These EU6 units use variable exhaust valve timing and selective catalytic reduction for extra cleanliness. And as with most modern diesels, there's an AdBlue after treatment system that sprays an aqueous urea solution into the exhaust system, neutralizing harmful gases like nitrogen oxide. It also helps that internal friction has been reduced by 17% with these engines and that they're 20 to 30 kilograms lighter than the old Ford units. Plus, as you'd expect, they're equipped with the latest stop-start technology that switches off the engine in just 300 milliseconds when the car is stationary. As for the results of all these efforts, well, you'll really notice those in your wallet region if you come to this improved Evoque, fresh from having run an example of the original version. The most efficient two-wheel drive ED4 150 PS variants get blue badging, designating their status as what Land Rover calls e-capability models, and they justify it with returns that are right at the forefront of the class. A coupe ED4 model manages 68.8 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and 109 grams per kilometre of CO2, which, to give you some perspective, is better than a 1.2 litre Fiat 500 city car. The five-door Evoque is nearly as good, managing 65.6 .6 miles per gallon and 113 grams per kilometre, which means it'll take you around eight miles more on every gallon than an equivalent pre-facelift model, and significantly for your tax banding, put out about 16 grams per kilometre less of CO2. Opt for this Range Rover with four driven wheels and the pokey 180 PS TD4 diesel engine, and those figures take a bit of a hit. They're class leading though, which is pretty impressive given that ordinary TD4 Evoque has a more heavy duty permanent four wheel drive system rather than the part time two wheel drive, four wheel drive setup um, that the rivals use. Specifically, we're talking 59.4 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and 125 grams per kilometre of CO2 for three or five door models with manual transmission. Uh, figures that don't rise markedly if you go for the nine speed automatic gearbox. The automatic five-door model I'm trying here is supposed to deliver 55.3 miles per gallon and 134 grams per kilometre. And you'll do a fraction better than that in the coupe automatic variant. Whatever your transmission choice, all of this means that the 63-litre fuel tank should give you a touring range of about 780 miles. Of course, if you opt for the older petrol technology that's still used in the performance-minded automatic-only SI4 evokes, then you'll need to readjust your efficiency expectations somewhat. With this engine, you'll be looking at 36.2 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and 181 grams per kilometre of CO2. And that's with either of the hard top body styles. I should probably mention at this point that thanks to its extra weight, the automatic only Evoke convertible can't quite match the figure of the hatch versions. In TD4 diesel, guys, it manages 49.6 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and 149 grams per kilometre of CO2. While in SI for petrol form, it returns 32.9 miles per gallon and 201 grams per kilometre. Of course, the driver will need to play his or her part in pursuit of cleanliness and frugality, keeping an eye on the eco data part of the infotainment screen. Here you get various screen options. Uh, there's one that shows you the impact on fuel of various electrical items, and another with so-called eco tips that are, well, they're supposed to improve your frugality. Although some of these, to be frank, are a bit blindingly obvious. Things like um, make smooth use of the accelerator and maintain a constant speed. Most useful is the driving style display that marks your driving efficiency from one to five in three areas. Acceleration, speed and engine, and braking. If you've a variant like this one, fitted with the more advanced SD card based 3D navigation system, it'll also help that the routing software can propose an economical route option to minimize fuel consumption. What else? Uh, well, I will tell you that thanks to the Ingenium technology, the diesel engines can now offer longer service intervals. These pushed out from 16,000 to 21,000 miles. 
Further good news in this regard lies in the fact that you can opt for a fixed price servicing plan that for a one-off payment of around £500 at purchase covers you for five years or 50,000 miles. You can also cover 75,000 miles for around £650 if you are planning to see a bit more of the world. As for residuals, well, these should be strong and will certainly be significantly better than obvious rivals. A uh, TD4 five-door automatic model like this one will still be worth around 57% of its original purchase price after the usual three-year operating period. That's provided you don't go too wild on the options list, of course. On to insurance. Uh, for ED4 two-wheel drive five-door models, you're looking at either Group 28E or 30E, depending on the trim level you choose. For the Coupe ED4 variant, it'll be Group 32E. For the TD4 four-wheel drive coupe and five-door models, uh, you're looking at groupings uh, ranging between 33E and 38E. And for the SI4 petrol variants, you're looking at either group 39E or group 40E, depending on the trim level you choose. As for the warranty, well, buyers get a three-year unlimited mileage package, but extensions are available. Finally, it's worth reminding you that Land Rover is big on sustainability these days. Around 15 kilograms of recycled plastic and 21 kilograms of renewable and natural materials are used to build each evoke, while the interior metal trim panels are fashioned from 95% recycled aluminium. Ever since it was first launched, this model has been a turning point for the Land Rover brand. Other SUVs have pioneered more car-like handling, but ultimately they've still been SUVs, both to drive and to look at. The Evoque isn't like that. In all the ways that matter, off-road ability, towing prowess, that commanding driving position, it's a 4x4. Just in all the ways that also matter, efficiency, cutting edge style and driving pleasure, it feels like, well, something quite different. Contradictory qualities we've been waiting all too long for from a car of this kind. That Land Rover has delivered them in a machine so fashionable, relevant and clever continues to mark this Evoque out as a very desirable thing indeed, even at the expensive prices being asked. No, it's not ultimately as spacious inside as some obvious rivals, but then it doesn't have to be, thanks to the fact that the brand will have its Discovery Sport model sitting on the other side of any given showroom. A bigger problem at the car's original launch was the less than cutting edge engine technology that the Solihull company was first of all obliged to insert beneath the bonnet. Now that the Mark's own Ingenium diesel power plants are provided there, it's possible to appreciate just how much better this Evoque can be. And that extra convertible body style won't do this model's sales prospects or its image any harm at all. Of course, the competition for this car is tougher than it was at launch, but the much improved infotainment system, the smarter interior and the extra safety provision will all help the proposition on offer here. All of this has created a very strong product indeed, although it won't be an invincible one if the Solihull brand's marketeers get too ambitious with the pricing. Otherwise, though, just about the only thing that can really sink this Evoque is for it to go horribly out of fashion. And that doesn't look like happening anytime soon. But just in case, the emphasis on substance over style with this mid-term facelift will serve this model well. Future-proofing Land Rover's biggest money spinner. In summary then, the Evoque is now even easier to recommend than it was before. It's the only car in the premium compact SUV segment with a conceivable appeal to lifestyle buyers not necessarily searching for a premium compact SUV. And that says a lot. If you are in the market for something of this kind, you can stretch to the asking price and you can afford not to place too much of a premium on practicality, then you won't be disappointed. This is, quite simply, the class of the field.